Hi, this is Ron Sipsick, and in this particular segment, we're going to take a look at a submarket of the loanable funds market. In an earlier lesson, we learned that there is something called the credit market or the loanable funds market, and that's the market through which funds are both saved, lended, and borrowed. In this particular segment, we're going to look at a submarket within the loanable funds market. So we can think of we can think of the federal funds market as a small subsegment of the overall loanable funds market. So let me note that. And the title is a bit misleading. Uh, you would think from the term loanable a federal funds market that that is something official. In other words, it's something governmental. It's something government ordained or government controlled. But in fact, it's not. The federal funds market is actually a private market. And it's basically the interaction between lending banks and borrowing banks when they make overnight loans. You may not know this, but banks actually loan to each other overnight. Sometimes the loans extend beyond a one-night loan, maybe to two or three or five days. But most of the loans actually are overnight loans. And you might say, well, why would banks loan funds to each other overnight? Well, at the end of a particular day, a bank might not be meeting its reserve ratio. It may have, overly, uh, it may have been overly aggressive in its loan activity. And therefore, it may find at the end of the day that it's not actually meeting reserve, reserve requirements. And therefore, it legally has to borrow funds and show more reserves in order to meet the, the requirements, uh, federal um, reserve requirements. Another possibility would be that the bank had some sort of run on it. In other words, it had an unusually high level of withdrawals, which depleted its reserve base. And again, uh, the bank isn't meeting its reserve requirement, and it would have to borrow from another bank in the banking system to meet that reserve requirement. So overnight loans between banks are very common, and this market is called the federal funds market. Now, why is this of interest to us here in this particular course? Well, in an earlier lesson, we learned that the Federal Reserve System manipulates the supply of loanable funds. When the Fed buys bonds, it actually shifts the supply of loanable funds to the right. So this shows up very conspicuously, very clearly in what is called the federal funds market. So when the Fed buys bonds, excuse me, I gotta change my marker back to the right, get rid of that. So when the Fed buys bonds, there's going to be an increase in the supply of loanable funds, and this will show up very strongly in the federal funds market. In other words, banks will have more reserves to loan, not only to bank customers, but to each other. Notice this movement in the supply curve occurs when the Fed buys bonds. And we've, we already have two videos on this related to what we call open market operations, and that basically is describing what happens when the Fed buys government bonds. So when the Fed buys these government bonds, the supply of loanable funds, bank to bank, will increase. Well, that's going to create a surplus of loanable funds, and of course, interest rates are going to drop. Now, the interest rate we're talking about is not an interest rate that is paid by, say, somebody borrowing money for a car or credit card money or even a business loan. The interest rate we're talking about is the federal funds rate. The federal funds rate is actually the interest rate that banks pay each other. Let's say for the sake of argument that the Federal Reserve System would like to lower the percentage federal funds rate from two down to one. Now we'll talk why the Fed would want to do that in a minute. But suppose that an interest rate of one percent is the target federal funds rate. Again, this is the FFR stands for federal funds rate. 
Let me just go ahead and write this down below so you have it in your notes. I'll just go ahead and do that for you. So let's go ahead and write that out. The federal funds rate is the interest rate that banks charge each other for what? For overnight. We're going to call these overnight loans. They're not all overnight loans, but most of them are. So we're going to call them, most of them are overnight loans, so we'll call them overnight loans. So the federal funds rate is the interest rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans. And folks, this is privately negotiated. This is not set by the government. This interest rate is not determined by the government. It's not a government mandated interest rate. Like most interest rates, this interest rate is determined by market forces. And so the federal funds rate is basically the negotiated interest rate between banks when they loan money to each other. That's, that's it. So let's go back up to our diagram and let's Let's say that the Fed would like to see the federal funds rate lower. Now, again, I haven't explained why they would like that to happen. But suppose that the federal funds rate, the target federal funds rate, is lower than it currently is. Well, what would the Fed want to do? Well, the Fed would want to buy bonds. And what would that do? That would increase, think about this, the amount of excess reserves in the banking system. Well, what are excess reserves? Excess reserves are loanable funds. Come on. Excess reserves are loanable funds. So what the Fed has done is it's, it has stuck its hose into the banking system and it's pumping more reserves into the banking system. Well, the effect of that will be to push down interest rates on loans. And of course, the quantity of funds loaned will increase. So this is dollar volume. The dollar volume of loan activity will increase and the interest rates on those loans will decrease. So let's go down and summarize this. All right, let me move us down. And this is very similar to what we talked about in the second segment of the open market operations video. We talked about this. We only we talked about it in a general way with the loanable funds market, but now we're getting specific. So when the Fed buys bonds, what does that do? That increases the supply of what? Federal funds. Now again, this, this, this title is misleading. You go, know, federal funds? This sounds like something government would be, but it's nothing to do with government. So the Fed buys bonds. This increases the supply of federal funds. This is going to create what? A surplus of federal funds. And that's going to push down what? That's going to push down the federal funds rate. At the present time, the federal funds rate today, today, at the time of the, that this video is being produced, the federal funds rate in the United States is equal to, watch this, 0.25%. In other words, if you're using a quarter point system, the Fed has pushed interest rates effectively. The federal funds rate pushed interest rates in the federal funds market down to as close to zero as you can make them. This is called a zero, a zero interest rate policy. Now, we're not saying that car loans have an interest rate of zero. We're not saying that home loans have an interest rate of zero. We're not saying that credit card money is loaned out at an interest rate of zero. But we're saying a very fundamental interest rate in the banking system has been pushed down to zero and that's the federal funds rate and you'll sometimes even hear hear news reports or read things that talk about how the Fed has lowered interest rates to almost zero well the interest rate that's being spoken about is the federal funds rate now what we're going to learn here in just a minute is that all other interest rates not well I need to qualify that not all interest rates but many of the other interest rates are actually built off of the federal funds rate so if you lower the federal funds rate, you're actually able to lower many other interest rates in the banking system.
Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, scroll down and I'll, I'll show you that idea. So let, let, me, let me just quickly say again, because I don't want you to get the wrong impression. We can get the impression that the Fed controls interest rates. The Fed does not directly control interest rates. It's not like uh, Janet Yellen, the chairwoman of the Federal Reserve System, can call banks up and demand that they lower their interest rates. Again, the Federal Reserve System works through a private banking system. Okay, this is critical. So the way the Fed lowers interest rates is by either what? Pushing more excess reserves into the banking system or pulling excess reserves out of the banking system. It's the manipulation of the level of reserves, which is called the monetary base, which affects interest rates at least short-term interest rates in the banking system. Okay, So the Fed has the ability to manipulate interest rates by manipulating the level of reserves in the banking system. Now, let me show you uh, a very, very important principle. So here you have, let's say, your federal funds rate. And say that this is at 1%. Okay. If you take the federal funds rate and add a premium of roughly 3%, 3%, which means that we now have a total of what? 4%. You now have something roughly equal to what we would call the prime rate. The prime rate. Now, the prime interest rate is the interest rate that the best business customers pay on loans. Let's go ahead and we'll write that out. That's a, that's a term you should know. So the prime rate is the interest rate that commercial banks charge to the best best business customers okay so the prime rate is not what you and I would borrow at when we go to the bank necessarily if I were going to be starting a new business, let's say I was going to start some sort of uh, business and uh, say I'm going to start a sandwich shop. Mr. Sipsick is going to retire from teaching and start a sandwich shop. Now, I go to, I put together a business plan and I work out the numbers and I go to a bank and I make this presentation to one of the commercial loan officers and they're interested in loaning funds to me. Uh, but they know that I'm a relatively inexperienced businessman and they know that that's a relatively risky loan. Okay? Are they going to loan to me at the prime rate? Absolutely not. I'm too risky. So they're going to they're going to take the prime rate and add a risk premium to it. However, if someone like the Ford Motor Company goes to a large commercial bank and wants to borrow, establish a line of credit, and wants to borrow, uh, it's very likely that Ford would borrow at or near the prime rate. Apple. And now Apple doesn't need to do much borrowing because it's so flush with cash, but the, the Apple company uh, could borrow from a bank at, at the prime rate. It's such a reliable, established company. Okay, so the prime interest rate is one of the key interest rates in the business sector. Okay, and it tends to be a benchmark on which other business interest rates are built. Okay? Now, it's not unusual for credit card companies to build credit card rates off of the prime rate. You'll sometimes see this. In fact, it's quite common for many credit card companies to add a premium of, let's say, 4% to the prime rate. So you're going to see an interest rate here of what? Of 8%. So if the prime rate's at 4%, you might see a credit card interest rate 
of 8%. Now, this doesn't mean everybody gets to borrow on their credit cards at 8%, but the best credit card customers might get an interest rate of 8%, say after all the introductory offers are made and all the gimmicks that are used in marketing to get people to use the credit card. Once you've gotten past those marketing gimmicks, you might find that the user of a credit card could be a small business, could be a household, uh, but somebody with a very good credit record might be able to get a credit card at 8%. Okay, and, and if you study this more intensely, you would see that other interest rates fall in here. So there's uh, what I'm trying to say is the federal funds rate is a key interest rate. It's a foundational interest rate in establishing let me just write this out, foundational uh, interest rate in establishing other interest rates. So the Fed knows that if it pushes the federal funds rate down, compresses it, other interest rates will come down as well because other interest rates are built off of it. Okay? All right, well, this, this really concludes our lesson. And uh, let's just take a quick, let's go back up to the top and just uh, quickly summarize what we've done here because this uh, this is one of the most important diagrams in the money and banking section looking at how the Fed affects the federal funds rate you really want to understand how the federal fund uh, how the Fed the Federal Reserve System uh, manages monetary policy you're gonna find that it it really pays a lot of attention to the federal funds rate it's an interest rate which is very 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 sensitive to the Federal Reserve's actions and so when the Fed buys bonds, what is it trying to do? It's trying to pump excess reserves into the banking system, move the supply of federal funds, loanable funds, to the right, and push down the interest rate on those funds, in this case, the federal funds rate. If the Fed were to sell government bonds, it would be just the opposite. That would actually suck reserves out of the banking system. That would shift the supply of loanable funds to the left, and it would push interest rates higher. Now you might wonder, well, why would the Fed ever want to raise interest rates? Well, there are cases where the, F the Fed is concerned about inflation and wants to curb spending, particularly spending that is funded by debt, rather than encourage it. So sometimes the Fed is actually engaging in what is called contractionary monetary policy. Most of this course and most of the lessons that I have presented talk about expansionary monetary policy where the Fed is pumping reserves into the banking system because most of the time the Fed is actually expanding the money supply, expanding credit conditions, not contracting them. All right, well this concludes our lesson on the federal funds market.